reverse it. Because if you don't, especially if you're using two different color woods, you'll wind up with purple on one side and yellow on the other. So I wasn't paying attention and I wound up with two, one purple side and one yellow side, so I had to break the thing back apart. And it, it, you can see in the bottom, and I think up here at the top, where I, I wasn't able to split it good. So uh, it's got a, got a hole. And this one, I started, and I got out of sequence, and I did something wrong just to begin with. And uh, I, when I was finishing it, I cut through the top, or I made a mistake earlier on roughing it. And it kind of is still pretty fat on the finial. It should be a lot smaller. But, and this is just poplar, uh, just some that I had because it's just trying to demonstrate. But I took a little paint on the inside red. I was going to do the outside green and try to make a kind of a Christmas ornament. But that's, so you can see kind of what I'm going to try to show you how to do. But I'm going to try to take you through every one of the steps. And I did this up at Mark's once. Uh, as a demonstration, but I didn't go through every one of the steps that I go through. So, um, also, I have about 25 copies of the instructions. I'm not a, certainly not an expert in anything, and uh, I don't come up with a lot of original ideas. Most of the stuff I do is I've seen it on the internet somewhere or seen a demonstrator do it and then wanted to duplicate it. So, these are the instructions for what I'm going to show you today. Uh, the front is the written instructions, and the back is a pattern for for this particular one. You know, but really, it's kind of whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, this is just this design, but you can do anything you want. So if you'll take one and pass it back. Uh, also, I got this off the internet, so uh, let me see if I can find. address. I'll send that address out because it's pretty long. I was going to write it up there, but uh, I'll, I'll put the web page where I found instructions on the internet. Um, and there's lots of videos on how to do this stuff on the internet. So if you wanted to try, I would suggest you go out and just look at it. So. Do we just search for Paul Moore? No, you don't search that. So. <laughs> So the way this particular design starts is you start with four pieces of uh, seven eighths inch by this, I think it's seven and a quarter inch long pieces of poplar. You can see I didn't cut these very good because one's seven and a quarter and one's a little bit more. So it doesn't really matter. You just really need them to be the same dimension uh, this way, seven eighths by seven eighths. So what you do is you start off, get on um, plain and, and some flat edges. And what you're going to first do is you're going to glue them up uh, so that you can be break, so they can be broken apart at a later point. So what I do is I use uh, newspaper and I just line this up along the edge of the paper. And just rip it. Just kind of want these to be straight as much as possible because it'll help you line them up uh, when you glue them. Anyway, so two pieces of paper. Paper better than typing paper? 
I think any paper will work because this newspaper is pretty cheap if you get the newspaper. But uh, there's one guy, all I'm doing here is just spreading it so it gets a good connection on it. There's a guy on the internet that does these, or does some, and he only glues the top quarter inch or top inch or something like that. And he actually uses super glue. I've not used super glue, just I'm a little bit afraid that it will uh, come apart. But he he was doing he was doing a much bigger turning and kind of more aggressive cuts than what I'm going to do, and he didn't have any problems. So you could use super glue, but uh, but I use this and I and I do the full length. So, and I've not had one come apart. Um, so now you just want to try to line the edges up as, as best as possible because that will help keep everything square. I really hate these things because they slide. So you just put one there.
something like that, <coughs> where this was the center line, <coughs> so that when he broke your car, turned it around, you, you were left with like this heart. I don't remember what the guy's name, but it was a YouTube video that I was watching. Um, so. So now that you got your two halves and you glue them up, anyway, you would glue it up now that you've got four, okay? And then you would clamp that, set that aside. So then you're wound up with this, which is four pieces glued together with paper in between all the joints. So now you want to mark them. This is pretty important because this is why that one doesn't look right. Because once you <coughs> turn it, you're going to have to reverse it out in a particular order. So basically, I just put an X there and mark on one, two, three, and four. <coughs> and then this is where we we're going to start the turning.
it's off a little bit, but it's not going to matter too much. So basically what we're going to do now is turn, turn this shape. So this is the template that's on the back of the paper that I sent you, or that I gave you. Uh, this also shows to use a chuck. I mean, you can do these with a chuck, or you can just do it between stairs. Um, so the next thing I'll do is kind of mark this, just so I have an idea. Right there. So that when you turn it around, you would get um, that shape. Well, that's a pretty bad tree, but you get the idea that where that would be the center. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you kind of, I haven't really figured this out, so I'm not going to try it, but that would be, I think, the shape you'd have to turn in order to make a Christmas tree when you reverse it out. So anyway, we're just gonna. So all you want, all you're wanting to turn now is between these two lines. You don't want to touch any of this other. I mean, if you do, it's not critical. But you really are only want to turn in between this in order to get this shape. Okay. So I'm just gonna use the spindle gouge. Turn up and I can see those lines. I didn't bring a face shield. Closer, I thought I was. 
Paper line. 
See, like here, I've got a, like a hard stop um, where it curves around and that stops hard. I really probably wouldn't have wanted that. I would have wanted that more of a, a rounded shape. Unfortunately, you know, the one I'm going to turn here has got some of what I want to. So, probably need to spend a little more time on getting that curve, the bottom curve to come up and the top one to come down and make it just more of a rounded shape. So then you want to go back to doing two at a time. So you want to take the first two, clean these joints off on the like on the sandpaper, put these two together, put these two together, so you can clean the joints off, put these two together, let those set up. And this now it's without any paper, so you just put the wood to wood. And then once those two are set up, again, I mean I, I wait a day. You may not have to on tight line, but I do. And then you would glue these up, uh, these four, or then you glue the two halves together, and then now you're going to turn the outside. So this is what you line up with. You got your paper remnants from where you had it all glued up. I meant to. I, I typically, once I get to this point, I take it back to the uh, table saw and I clip the ends just to start off with uh, a smooth end, uh, but it, you don't have to. So now I'll turn the outside. <laughs> Again, you want to try to mark the centers and stay as close to center as you can. Thank you. 
instructions again show it as having a, a tenon holding it in a shock, but again, you can turn this whole thing between centers if you don't have a shock. using a roughing gouge. Here, just trying to 
figure out how much farther we gotta go. Just got a little bit there. But you can see I'm not real good at square here because I've got paper here, got a little bit there, but I'm almost gone there. So the, the openings are gonna be a little bit different. <coughs> So that's why the squaring up and gluing up is really critical. Yeah, and, and finding your centers. You know, oh, this yeah, could have been a little bit because I didn't have the end, ends trimmed, but I don't know. So we're going to see. Let's just kind of give me an idea of where all this stuff is. You can mark, you know, get the calibers out and figure out exactly how high each one of these are. And use a parting tool. You know, you, if you wanted to get your calipers out, you can measure, okay, how big is this? And take a parting tool. But it's, it's kind of whatever you want to do. So I, I don't really follow too much other than just a little bit of the design is all I'm doing. So. I think at this point I really want to go back and 
do some more work up here because now I'm a little bit afraid that it's going to get too thin down here on this end. And so I want to kind of try to finish some of this. Uh, I won't, won't take very much off down here, but go ahead and round off the rest of this. Yes, Arthur. Would, would you go back to where your catch was and explain why the catch occurred? I think what happened was, I'm trying to remember which way I was going. I think I was going this way. No, probably going this way. And I just got off of the back of the, you know, where they talk about riding the bevel. I got off of the back and it just caught the tip. And when it did, it, it just pulled it. And you, know, you could see there were spirals all the way up to here. But as I was coming around here, I just got off the back of the tool. And when that tip caught, it just pulled it. I'll do it again. And it's caught right there. Just like that. And just run across. So, um, now I kind of want to just blend this curve in here. Oops. Get your finger up and turn it on.
some people can switch hands and go left and right. I, I can't do it. I've got at least not with this tool.